Welcome to Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle, along with my friends and colleagues, Ed Brandyberry and Josh Mills. Today we're going to talk a little bit about pairing your favorite alcoholic beverage with a cigar. You can email or tweet. You can tweet us at at SmokestackPGH, or you can find us in the email at info at SmokestackPGH.com. I'm Josh Eagle. Welcome back to Inside the Humidor, along with my friends and colleagues here at the Smokestack on University Boulevard in Moon Township. Ed Brandyberry, welcome back. Josh yeah. Mills, ready to smoke? Absolutely. Today we're going to talk a little bit and have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about, I don't think there's anything more pleasing to the palate than pairing a cigar with your favorite spirit. Would you guys agree? Absolutely. So no. today on the show, we're going to drink and smoke cigars. <laughs> so I, I think we can handle this one. That's right. We have uh, three alcohols that we're going to feature today. We have the Woodford Reserve. It is a nice American bourbon. We have the Mount Gay Black Barrel. It's a Barbados rum. And we have a cognac uh, from France, the Corvassier, the VS. We're going to try all of these with the cigars that we picked. Josh, what cigars you picked today? I've got the Oliva Connecticut Reserve. It's a nice, mild to medium bodied cigar. Um, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, so you should get some creaminess, um, a little bit of nuttiness and coffee notes from the t Nicaraguan tobacco in there. So we will see how that pairs with the different spirits. Ed, what are you going to smoke today? Uh, Perdomo 20th No way. <laughs> get, out of, <laughs> get out of town. Perdomo 20th Anniversary Maduro Pyramid. Only the two peas make a true pyramid. Absolutely. That's Drone and Perdomo. I'll show, hold that one up and show that pyramid. We've, we think we've showcased that, that on before, previous shows. Maybe. Yeah. But uh, the pyramid is a tapered cigar just like a pyramid. Sure, sure. I'm going to smoke the Grupus de Maestros, the, the newest release from Monte Cristo. It's a limited release cigar. Uh, the Grupa de Maestro is a group of their master blenders over at Monte Cristo, and they teamed up with some great tobacco growers to make this cigar. Uh, in profile, we're probably at medium to medium plus on it. I personally think it smokes a little bit more towards the medium side, the description yeah. that Monte Cristo will give you. It's a nice full body, but it's a flavorful cigar, and we're going to try to get these paired up and match what we're tasting. Now, when we're tasting a cigar and a spirit, it can enhance the experience. It can also wash out the experience. Yes. Talk a little bit, Ed. Like, if you're smoking that cigar right there with, say, gin, what would happen? Well, other than I don't care for gin, <laughs> <laughs> I think actually gin would probably be washed out by this cigar. Absolutely. I wouldn't taste the gin, which is fine with me, but um, this particular one would. Uh, just overpower it has so much flavor and that's the thing when you're smoking cigars and you're pairing them up you know that one of the rules of thumb it's pretty easy to pair up a cigar with a spirit in my opinion easier than say like a food and wine pairing where you can get kind of the off to start your pairing you're best going with the strength of body matching the strength of body from the spirit would you guys agree with that yeah absolutely I think generally that you know that's a good one. if you have a, a nice hoppy beer you know, you better get something in there that's going to compete against that hops. If you have the deep sweetness of a stout, you better maybe get some of that full-bodied with the pepper in there to really balance these things out because spirits have a different full-bodied profile than cigars do, but they pair well when you match them in body. Yes. So white or clear alcohols like gin, vodka, uh, the, the white rums, they generally do not go well with a cigar. They usually get completely washed out. Any mixer, anything like that does not go well with a cigar. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. I don't think I've ever had a mixed drink that I like with a cigar. No. Uh, uh, different like a... Jack and Coke or rum and Coke, something like that is, gets gets along okay. Well, also uh, there's a he, the wrapper he has, Ecuadorian Sumatra. In my experience, has been one of the most versatile wrappers. Yes, we found that out of a few yeah. pairings that the Sumatra wrapper seems to go with a lot more than just you know say a dark habano or a Maduro. Mm -hmm. You seem to really have to stick in the wheelhouse where the Sumatra seems to to jump down the line. And I think because it's medium, it's going to have. And most of those Ecuadorian Sumatras end up smoking that medium, medium plus, or that mild to medium, right, but right in that little sweet spot of that scale. 
which gives you, the, I think, the biggest hit of what you can to drink with it and what you can't. Because if you're up here on the power scale, you know, it's tough to come down. I think what we have on the table right there, you know, with a full-bodied cigar, you would think that bourbon might pair with it the best. But at the end of the day, the body on a bourbon can be real crisp. It can be real citrusy, caramel, actually a little bit more delicate than, say, like a space cider or a smoky, peaty scotch would be. Um, or I'm hoping, we haven't tried this yet, this is the, the Black Barrel release. Mount Gay is the oldest distiller of rum in the world, established in 1703. They happen to put that on this barrel. It's their newest release. It is a, bar uh, a bourbon barrel aged, which is going to give that a little bit of that mm. caramel color, and yeah. I think it's going to go well with the cigar. The Woodford Reserve, uh, this is a, a, a real nice small batch. It's been getting a lot of play in the last five to ten years. This has become a really popular spirit in the mm -hmm. bourbon world. And an old standby, we're just going to throw a little bit of cognac in there, taste some of that citrusy notes, and try to mix it up a little bit. So on that Oliva, you'll see we also have great cups of coffee. When that will take and cleanse our palate in between. Alcohol also goes great with cigars. Do some mm -hmm. cigars go better with coffee? Oh, I think almost any cigar goes That's, uh, well with coffee. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to say we, uh, we're we're going to get into the rums and bourbons and cognacs and stuff of the world. But my my favorite pairing with cigars, if you're going to go any kind of drink, alcoholic or not, is going to be coffee. I just think a good strong cup of coffee and a cigar, almost any cigar, really works out nicely. You don't find that a strong cup of coffee though wipes out something that you're smoking there, like the Connecticut? Maybe it's just because I enjoy the experience so much. I want to say no because a lot of times I'll smoke a milder cigar in the morning time when I'll typically have a cup of coffee. And, um, you know, maybe it's just the action of smoking a cigar I like. But when I grab a nice mild cigar and I drink a cup of coffee, it's an enjoyable experience. Maybe it's not the hottest pairing in the world. The coffee might be washing out some of the flavor there. But you know, At the end of the day, though, pairing up your spirit with your favorite beverage or pairing up your cigar with your favorite beverage, it's, it should be about what you like and fun. That's Back right. to... You know, there's no hard line no. when it comes to mixing. If you like, uh, you know, didn't the guy say orange juice? Orange juice. Orange <laughs> juice. Craziest thing. There's some uh, some guys in Nicaragua that really like orange juice and cigars. I have to give that one a shot. That sounds, I don't think I have quite weird. the uh, just, adventurous attitude yeah, that doesn't quite. to go towards that. But we found that a lot of fun things pair. And beer has become a new one in the cigar world. Yeah. And I think that Perdomo and, and um, there is uh, Asylum just came out with the... Milk stout infused yep. cigar, um, hops from Ted's made by hand cigars right. has done an infusion. Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest, another Fish, that official cigar of the Munich. Right, and I should talk about the Oktoberfest. difference between that infused cigar and actual that that uh, dragon's milk. Is that what it is? Is it dragon? mm, dragon's milk? Dragon's milk from Asylum. That's an actually an infusion where they actually use dragon milk stout in there. Same right. with the Ted's the hops. That's an infusion in the wrapper, so you're actually getting the taste of that beer, the hops, or those malts and the stout inside of the wrapper, where Oktoberfest from Casada and the new line that's coming out from Perdomo, and those ones are more just geared to pair with. They don't have any infusions. They're actual tobacco, right. but they're not... They're getting to drink a lot of beer while they're blending their stuff. Right, you have to taste them. That's, that's right, part of the right. fun. As you can see, we're working very hard here today, and I'm going to get this cigar lit. My cigar's working hard to life. All right, let's get down to the nitty-gritty here, Josh. Let's start with the, uh, the wood for reserve, guys. When you got a good light and got a, a good taste going, we'll pair it up with the, with the wood for the bourbon, and we'll see what kind of effects it gives, changes in the cigar or in the liquor itself. Well, for me, uh, this isn't... Right off the bat here, we'll see how, how it develops, but uh, the bourbon's almost completely wiping this out. Um, I thought because on this Oliva Connecticut, there's a little bit of pepper action on the back end. Um, I thought maybe some of that creamy mouthfeel would hold up, but um, just off that first taste there, uh, completely overpowered by the bourbon. It's almost like I didn't even have a cigar. Do you think because we have uh, the length of your cigar there, do you think that that could change maybe? This is maybe something we can talk about in this episode, guys, would be the changes in the thirds and how when you're tasting a cigar the thirds are really what you're judging it off of the first third that middle third and then the, the final third of the yeah. cigar so when you're going to get those changes through the tobacco we're going to come back around when we get to the thirds and these guys are going to stand here watching us do this and we're in a time <laughs> yeah, i've only thing. got a two-hour cigar guys, right so. so by the time ed gets to it it'll be 7 30 at night 
But so your initial impression was that bourbon with that cigar, it's not really holding up because of the, the lightness of the wrapper or the metal blind profile. Yeah, that's, profile. that's what I would have guessed when I picked this one up. I wanted to do a milder cigar to kind of showcase, um, you know, it, it takes a little bit more delicate, uh, less full-bodied. And I thought the bourbon might actually stand a chance, but... Um, well, no, hopefully right when we get to the uh, to the citrus of the Corvassier there, that we can That's maybe get, thinking, find yeah. a match. I'm going to point out that it isn't that the Oliva doesn't taste well. It's that the Oliva taste almost No, there's no conflict of character or of, of flavors. It's, it's, it's nearly that... It's overwhelmed. It's overwhelmed, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that definitely comes down to the body of the cigar versus mm -hmm. the, the body of the spirit that we're using, Ed. That cigar is going to be able to hold up to all of them. Which one's going to pair the best is probably going to be more the decision that needs to be made. With this one. Yeah, with yeah. the full body. I mean, there's yeah, nothing on the table that's going to overpower nice this. Here. Very nice. Now, Enjoy. when you have a nice pairing, what are you looking for to, that makes it, say, nicer than another pairing? Uh -huh. Other than the washout. Yeah. I, well, that's right. First, on the negative end, I don't like one to wash out the other so that I don't even notice I'm, you know, it could be I'm it's like drinking water or smoking air. Right. Uh, you don't want either one of those. But um, what I like to have, first of all, is I like, I like to still be able to taste the unique flavors of each. But sometimes, I think in a really good pairing, they start to bring out some of the notes in the alcohol that are already there, bring them to the fore, forefront. And the same thing on the cigar, I think that you can have a cigar, some of the notes that you didn't notice as much before, they were there, but certain alcohols will bring out certain notes in, in these cigars that maybe bring some sweetness to the forefront that isn't there. Uh, it's more in the background before, might bring it a little. So it does change. What you are having is, you know, in a marriage, husbands and wives mm -hmm. change each other or try to change each other. and. <laughs> Depending on how well that goes along is whether it's a good marriage or not. But uh, I think that's what I have here. This is this this goes well. And we're still early in the cigars, guys, and that really matters when you're pairing. That first that first quarter inch, half an inch of the cigar, you're really not getting into that sweet spot, into its true body. So when you first take a couple lights, if you're new to tasting or experiencing pairing, it's it's probably very uh, interesting to note that that first bit of the cigar is never tastes the same as when you get in that second, third, where you start to really open up right. and really feel th what the notes are. You'll get some notes right away. Just It's almost like the nose. Smelling a cigar, to me, is the same as that first half inch of sm if I, compared to smelling an right, alcohol. Right, right. Well, so I, I smell a spirit on the nose, that first half inch of burn, you can barely smell anything when you smell just smell a cigar. You don't get any notes or you, you can't. It just smells like tobacco. I mean, some of these guys, they can tell you a leaf based on smell. My palate isn't that re refined, and I'm sure that anybody out there watching doesn't have that refined of a palate either. So I took a sip of this bourbon. Uh, on the nose, it actually has a, a little hint of mint. There's a bit of cinnamon. When I take it into the cigar, that mint goes completely away. The tail on this one gets a little bit long for me, on this bourbon in particular. Yeah. I think it stays with you a little bit longer. Makes it tough to pair the cigar. This cigar being a medium cigar, Ed's probably the only one that's gonna is holding up to this right now. This cigar isn't getting washed out. I got the flavors, but the cigar stays with me way less than the alcohol does. So the alcohol, by the end of the tail, it's almost like a new palate every time, which could be a fun pairing, because every time you take a sip, it basically it has the marriage, and then it's like you start it all over again from scratch. Yeah. This is going, as you said, this is going well. Um, I'm still picking up the spice notes that you get from the Nicaraguan tobacco, and um, I'm not getting uh, some of the bitterness that you sometimes get, can get when you're first starting out with some bourbons. Uh, that seems to be uh, eliminated with with this pairing, even at the early stage. Well, see, on the second taste there, it, it, it seemed to match up a little bit better. I got a lot more of the cedar of the cigar, and it kind of gave me some of the barrel of the of the bourbon, which was nice because I got a little bit more smoke, you know, the smoky taste, other than that real citrusy and that long tail, mm -hmm. which I... 
you know, try to get rid of when I'm drinking bourbon. Some citrusy ones I enjoy, but I like more of that smoke in the charred oak barrels. This one, when I go when I go off of the cigar into the into the bourbon, um, it, I, again, it's still washing out the flavor of the cigar, but the 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 finish of the cigar still in my palate is changing the way that I taste the bourbon. I'm getting a lot heavier citrus, kind of almost almost tastes like an orange infused bourbon almost. It's mm -hmm. so orangey, so kind of an interesting play there. Um, still not a great pairing, but not something that's unenjoyable either. But that's another aspect. You know, we're we're talking cigars, the, but the, the spirit changes. itself. Yeah. Uh, it changes, so you actually get some fun things that happen with the spirit, you know, in the marriage of pairing. So as we smoke through these cigars, guys, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the other marriages in cigars, and, and what are you doing when you're smoking these cigars? And there's some other things that are enjoyable to do, and some occasions that are great for cigars. Um, one is golf. Golf season's coming mm -hmm. up, so people are getting ready to dust off those golf bags and get out and have a nine holer. Time for a Churchill. Time for a Churchill. And, and why the Churchill? Why do you think that's the best golf course cigar? Uh, I think unless you're a speed smoker, which you don't get a chance to do uh, on the golf course, I don't think, uh, is uh, that Churchill should last you at least nine holes. Mm -hmm. That's what we call them, nine holers yeah, out nine there. Nine holer, yeah. yeah. Some of the great golf course cigars that we have that I'll be selling off a lot of would be uh, that Perdomo Champagne. Champagne, Champagne Perdomo Champagne, Churchill. Camacho Churchill. Camacho Churchill is another great golf course smoking. cigar. The Oliva Connecticut, great on the golf course. And when you're outside in the wind, you know, you don't really want to be thinking about the complexities of a cigar. I wouldn't recommend going out to the golf course with a, with a $30 stick. No. You don't want a 1926 in your hand, uh, no. a number nine, or, a, you know, you don't want to. No. You don't want to put the. This one, know. you don't want this one in your hand in particular. Probably. That one probably on the board would be the only one you know that would be great to smoke on the golf course, just because the the flavors are just so creamy. When you pick it back up after the wind burns, it still has a great. You're not worried about Grand the changes. Crew. Grand Crew would work that Grand Palma. Mm -hmm. The Grand Palma, um, a, the AKA line, the Solstice has been a, was a great mover mm -hmm. for us in the golf realm. So when you're looking to get on the golf course, you're looking for something that's not as expensive, um, but something maybe a little bit longer. It's a lot of fun, and you can get it, you know, for four mm -hmm. guys, you know, always bring right. four cigars out there. That's a little etiquette. Don't just for one for yourself. Yeah. Fuenny's a great... always good. Yeah, good for any time. There's a lot of great cigars for the golf mm -hmm. course, but the size, you know, that Churchill size, something that's mm -hmm. about seven inches is going to give you about nine holes. You bring eight of those to the course, you and your three other buddies, you know, smoke two. Enjoy a spirit at the end of the day. That's a, that's a heck of a day of golf. Now, we got to pass along one of the secrets about a golf course and about smoking. If you really like cigars and your buddies come and they only smoke cigars when they're golfing and they don't know the difference between a Sun Grown, a Maduro, a Connecticut, a mild cigar, a full-bodied cigar, the secret is buy an inexpensive Churchill and hand those out to them because there's no sense in you spending a lot of money on your buddies if they don't know what they're smoking. That's right. And half cigars on the cigar course and roll off the back of the cart, yeah. uh, get left on the ninth green, left in the tenth tee box. You always got that guy that says he wants a cigar and he smokes it about down to there and pitches it. That yeah. drives me crazier than uh, giving that guy a $12 stick. So. Now, Absolutely. 19th hole, that's where you bring out good cigars. Absolutely. When you're at, you've done your that's 18. That's right. You're so you can pair it up in, with a good one. You're not, you're not drinking yep, the uh, yep. the beer card curls. Then they uh, go, wow, you're saving this good pairing. one for now. Yeah. <laughs> Another great thing, you know, cigars, weddings are great, you know. Mm -hmm. We've done some some catered weddings. We had the Goodfellas Cigar Bar at one of them, which is a lot of fun. They passed out sticks. Great time for celebrations. Those are always fantastic. You know, you have the weddings, mm -hmm. you have bachelor parties. Cigars are great for those. And depends on what kind of debauchery you're getting into that evening. I'd recommend a different type of cigar. If it's actually guys sitting around talking about the cigars, drinking, if it's more of just about drinking and partying, different cigars for different times and those as well. Maybe something shorter. A box of cigars is great for a bachelor party so people can go through them a ton mm -hmm. and set them in somebody else's beer. And uh, he's going to still go back to the box and have another one. I've had that work out real well. Josh, what, with the outdoor cigars, what do you think, man? There's a lot of guys that come in for the dog walkers. Dog walkers, yeah. So, again, it's going to be similar to golfing. Um, when, when you get into, like, a dog walking cigar or a, a yard cigar, that kind of thing, um, you're, you're usually doing something else that's occupying your attention. So it's more about the action of having a cigar at that point, the, uh, the motion of puffing on it, the feeling of the smoke and everything else. Um, 
you know, I'm not walking my dog and analyzing the flavor profile and how much pine nut and, you know, toasted walnut I'm getting in this cigar. It's just not what's going on. So You're worried about picking up the crap. Yeah, leather. usually something yeah. under six bucks. Um, something that, you know, if, if, if I'm doing yard work and I were to drop it ten times, you know, it's not going to drive me crazy. I'm not going to be upset about losing a... Uh, $20 addition to Silvio or something like that. So something around under six bucks. Of course, if um, you were smoking a Candela, it would match. Yeah, that would, yeah, yeah the grassy flavor would be perfect. <laughs> no, yeah. and, and that's not to say that something under six dollars is a bad cigar, because in the last year especially, there's been some really great sub six dollar sticks to come mm -hmm. out. Um, the Room 101 Big Payback comes to mind. The AJ Fernandez New World, which was a cigar journal, a cigar of the year last year. Under six so you can still get into some great sticks that if you if you take a minute to kind of pause and reflect on what you're smoking, it's really enjoyable. But you're not breaking the bank if it's something that falls on the ground or gets ruined or something like no, that. No, sometimes it's best to pick up like a bundle at the beginning of the season for your grass cutting. And actually, I found out there, and I, there's actually some other people that agree with me. Smoking a cigar when you're cutting the grass for a guy who's allergic to grass, very badly. It actually keeps the allergens oh, that's down. That's right. Doesn't really. Yeah, yeah and it keeps that. the bugs out later yeah. at night. If you're if you're cutting in the evening or the morning hours, you have a lot of bugs. Mm -hmm. Put that cigar in your mouth. Go out there and cut through that grass, and actually knocks through. You know, keeps the, keeps bugs away and keeps the allergens down. Mm. You know, I really can't go to play. I can't play golf in the morning unless I have a cigar. We'll have to it's get impossible. a doctor on here sometime to talk about the yeah. medicinal effects of cigars. I like that. But, you know, a great bundle cigar at the beginning of the season, like the Florida Oliva or the Perdomo Fresco or the um, Quorum, you know, some mm. nice bundle cigars with short fill. That, that, Casa that, de Garcia. Yeah, Casa de Garcia that go well. And they're nice and easy, like you said, you don't, you're not afraid if you lose them or you drop them in the grass or no. they fall in the pile of dog crap when you're walking the dog. <laughs> but you got, you know, the, 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 I think the, the most talked about and, and the most cliche occasion for the cigar is when you have a child. Oh, yeah. The it's and a boy cigar. The, the it's, it's a, a boy cigar. and the it's a girl cigar. Now, this is coming from cigar guys, but don't show up with the it's a boys and it's a girls. If you actually have cigar smokers in the crowd, if someone's never going to touch it and it's just going to be commemorative, get the Fuente, it's a boy, it's a girl. Get the Siesta Ray, it's a boy, it's a girl. But if people actually want to smoke the cigar and celebrate the occasion, get some good go cigars. to the tobacconist, have them put together something. I'm sure they'll give you a discount. Sure, they'll keep you a couple extra sticks for the father, you know, and, and, and get something halfway decent. You know, I, I, I shake. Most of the time, people buy it to boys and girls, though they don't smoke cigars. They just think it's kind of fun to pass mm -hmm. it out. So those are always available. And they have little fun things on the wrappers. Yeah. Cheap cigar and, and bad cigar aren't necessarily synonymous, but sometimes, I mean, you're talking 60, 70 cents a stick. Mm -hmm. It's hard to come up with something of quality. It's going to be short filler. It's going to be <laughs> yeah. some of the most bland tobacco I think you could find on yeah. the planet. Um, You're essentially moving really not, on to open. really not probably what you want to commemor commemor commemorate such a, a special occasion there. Well, moving on to the rum. Have you tried the rum yet? With I haven't guy? got into the rum yet. Yeah. Well, this is the Mount Gay Black Barrels, the newest release like we talked about before. Uh, Mount Gay has been around forever in Barbados. They claim that they are the oldest distiller of rum in the world. Uh, this is a small batch release. You can see it kind of has that apothecary bottle, kind of a neat. A neat bottle on this one. And we're going to give it hell. You know, I'm starting to really enjoy rums with a cigar. I did, I used to just hate a rum. And then I find if you take a rum and a nice Nicaraguan cigar, or a Dominican. That's an interesting pairing for me. That one actually works pretty good. Um, Boy, this does too. The, uh, yeah, I'm impressed with this, guys. This is a nice pairing. What is this, Woodford Reserve? No, this is the this Mount is the Gay Mount Black Gay. Barrel. Mount Gay. This Woodford is the rum. Reserve was what we had the first. I'm the, getting a little bit of what you said at the beginning. There might be some smokiness in this bad yeah. boy from the way it's aged, and I'm absolutely getting that, which is interesting in a rum. Getting, Not something I'm used to on a rum. See, it's bringing out the Maduro sweetness in this. Okay, that's what I'm getting with this. You I'm know, getting, when you get the sugar cane in the rum, the yeah, way it's made, yeah. and then you put it in that barrel, these, I mean, in, in Central both? America, I mean, this is what they're pairing cigars this with, guys. This is wrong. what they're, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and both of these have aged, are aged in bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. My cigar and the, at least the wrapper on my cigar and, mm -hmm. and the rum that we're having. Uh, really a nice combination here. I'm really enjoying this. That's a hit. That's one to keep around. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a great hit. You have, a, uh, it's not bringing out any new flavors. It's not really... Um, 
You know, everything I'm tasting in the rum is in the rum. Everything I'm tasting in the cigar is in the cigar. But just talk about complementary flavors, flavors yeah. that match up together. The creaminess, the little bit of pepper with the smokiness, the citrus on the rum and the caramel with a little bit of the sweetness in here. Just really all kind of comes together. Yeah, because I'm getting the vanilla. Um, and and the, the cigar, it, it, I don't know. There's like almost no back burn. I'm getting no, no tail. Actually, it stuck around a little bit longer on that particular sip. But I can really get a lot of vanilla, and that's definitely... On the Sumatra wrapper, you really get in the, the taste of that vanilla and that, that smoke. I will say on the finish on this, which is the finish, I don't know if we've discussed, is when if you have the cigar in your mouth and you blow the smoke out, the, the residual flavor that's on there, or if you have alcohol and you swallow the alcohol, the residual flavor that hangs around afterward, that's what we're referring mm -hmm. to when we say the finish. Um, so when you get the finish of the rum and the finish of the, of the cigar. Now on Connecticut wrappers, one of my beasts with Connecticut wrappers is that you'll get a little bit of bitterness. Um, so the finish on the rum is bringing out that bitterness on the finish of the cigar, which I'm not a huge fan of. But up front, when I have, you know, at first it's extremely pleasant. The finish leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's not enough to ruin the experience. It's still an excellent pairing, one that I'm really enjoying. And someone who's used to smoking a Connecticut Shade cigar yes. a lot and might not actually enjoy some of that bitter mm -hmm. finish. But wouldn't you say that someone that enjoys a Connecticut shade as a regular smoke, would still appreciate that particular cigar and this rum pairing? Yeah, it's also subjective. On the, on the Connecticut wrapper, I get a little bit of that bitterness, and it's prevalent on almost every Connecticut that I've smoked, except for some of the ones that are really, really well aged. Um, so it's not to say that it's an it's ne inherently negative trait to this cigar. It's something that I don't like, but somebody else might mm -hmm. get a little bit of that bitterness and actually really enjoy it. Um, so if, if, for that person, this pairing where it brings out a little bit of that bitter flavor at the end might be even more enjoyable. Yeah, th this is the rum's actually bringing out that vanilla in the alcohol and the cocoa that's in this cigar. I'm getting that bitter, you know, that bitter chocolate, not like a sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. That bitter chocolate, and I'm getting a lot of vanilla with the actual, with the rum itself. So I think the rum's been a pretty good marriage. Well, how are we so stacking far. up so far? I preferred the rum over the, over the bourbon so far. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, and, and the one thing, I, we're, we're also dealing with different spirits here. These are regular production, um, you know, in the VS and in the Woodford Reserve. Uh, this is another, this is a small batch release. A little bit more care in the alcohol itself, which is going to matter. I think they're probably going to take this into regular production, though. And it's a really good spirit. So I don't want to get confused, too. Is, it, is the spirit better or is the pairing better? That's a good point. That's, that's a point of conversation. Because sometimes you can, like, if, we, if, this, if this was the double oaked 20 year, mm -hmm. is that going to be just a better spirit in general? Do we like, and that's, that's something when you're pairing to be cognizant right. of. Do you, just like the liquor, well, or do you get, like the marriage? When we get to the cognac, we've mm -hmm. got a VS, so that's a little older cognac. Because yeah. I think I might be going back on myself here. In the pairing world, you like I the think I might like the bourbon, the bourbon better. Mm -hmm. In the spirit world, I'd like to just sit down and drink that rum. Yeah, I prefer yeah. this rum tasting them back to back. The rum is extremely tasty, but for me, the pairing worked out better with the rum. The bourbon is pretty good. I drink that bourbon, no doubt about it. But with this cigar, it wouldn't be one of my good. And I usually prefer a scotch or a whiskey or a bourbon with a cigar. Yeah. And I'm just enjoying this pairing with the rum. With the rum. And and this cigar, really nice. Yeah, so I, I went back to it, and I'm going to rescind that statement. I actually think, <laughs> for me, the, the bourbon is pairing better okay. with this cigar. The rum I like better. And I... I, can, I reserve the right to change that further down I get it. <laughs> I'm going to give it hell. I'm going to uh, go with the um, with a little bit of this Cavassier. I'm going to get some coffee in there. Uh, Cleanse the palate, folks. We'll see if I drop this tough, ash. Tough job. That's something interesting we learned when we were down in Nicaragua was when, when those guys are in the factory blending their cigars, they're doing their serious tasting, they've got their guys with the best palates at it, what they do, and this is specific to Perdomo cigars, there might be better ways to do it, there might be different ways to do it, but this is what they do. They'll take coffee, they'll use a little bit of whole milk, and they'll use a little bit of sugar. And the uh, alkalinic properties of the milk and the fat that's in there um, is enough to cleanse the palate, and I guess they just like coffee and cigars, so that's why they use coffee, not just a glass of milk. And um, that's what they do when they're doing their serious tasting. So we kind of borrowed from that idea. We didn't have any milk around, so we're just using coffee, but 
Yeah. No, it works out. I mean, it works once you out. get that coffee, it washes better. Yeah, it washes the, 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 the finish on the alcohol out. All right, so it's a little bit of cognac, what guys. Cognac. What do you got, Ed? Cheers. Try a little bit of this. Gentlemen. All right, here All right. we go. I didn't have any coffee. That's an interesting cognac, first off. Buttery. Now, of the three spirits that are on there, this definitely has the, the, the chewiest of the textures. It has the, the for Very, me, the like, most of the mouth yeah. feel. Very thick like mouth thicker. feel. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a pairing for me where the cognac's not washing out the cigar, the cigar's not washing out the cognac. I can taste everything from both of them, um, but I wouldn't really say complimentary flavors. No. Um, when I first drank this one, the smoothness, the, the butteriness on it, the little bit of citrus, I, I thought that maybe it would go better than it is, um, but it's just not, I don't know. I can taste everything. It's just not that good. It's a adequate pairing, it, it, you know, I, something that I would, might recommend to somebody, but I'm a little disappointed because I really thought when we had the cognac, I thought the cognac was going to go best with this, but absolutely it's the rum. And you like cognac. And I love cognac. I'm going to think, you know, in general, that with that Oliva cigar, that might be really good with a with a lager, with a beer. You might be right on that, yeah. And and beer, like we talked about, has been a newer uh, exploration with cigars. You know, the craft beer movement. Uh, you know, there's right. more craft beers than there are people, I think. And <laughs> you well, know, Arthur Kemper, who loves craft beers, talking <clears throat> Nick Pergomo into trying this new series that they'll have come out in, ju in June. Is, yeah, you know, uh, uh, I think playing to that growth of the, oh, the boom in the craft beer market. Well, now everyone's falling. So you're pairing, you pair anything you with that. It? You know, you find the right beer. I mean, the challenge they took on is an IPA, which I personally w will. What if I'm having a cigar? I will avoid an IPA like the play. Same here. Because the hops just washes. The finish on that IPA is yeah, so long yeah. and so pungent that the cigar never yeah. stands yeah. a chance. That but we, we, we go back. See, typically, my instinct on an IPA would be to go with a really full body, peppery smoke, mm. that kind of idea. And when we were doing a tasting up at, uh, up at the bar there, it was um, the IPA worked best with we had a medium body cigar with a Sumatra wrapper on it. That's and that right. was the Rocky best Patel pairing. Royal, right? Yeah. Royal. And yeah. that worked Rocky the best, Patel. surprisingly to me. Well, because, you know, when you get that Sumatra wrapper, like we said, it's one, it's the palate cleansing wrapper of the industry. It's the wrapper that actually takes that flavor away. If anybody smoked the cigar and it stayed with you for three days, that's not the Sumatra. The Sumatra is what you actually smoke along with the coffee and the milk and things like that. A Sumatra is what you smoke in between two smokes to get rid of that yeah. cigar taste it's on your palate. It's not going to hang around. It doesn't hang around. So when you, when you have that nice warm smoke and you're getting that flavors, then the IPA hops can be really, really sweet yeah. with that Sumatra wrapper. And it really makes the beer a lot of fun. Right. Because usually what I've found is people who don't like IPAs, if you team it up with a cigar, if you're a cigar guy, and then you have the IPA, the sweetness of the hops becomes prevalent so it's not as bitter. The Sumatra actually sweetens an IPA. But another, another pairing with something like that on a mild, white wine, a light mm -hmm. red, a blush might be really good with that cigar as right. well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the cognac for me on this cigar, it, it, it's just like Josh said, actually. There's not really much going on. I'm thinking, though, in this particular instance, guys, that the cognac isn't very interesting. Uh, that could be a definite problem. I mean, mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're getting down to refined opinions... I just don't think the cognac has much going on. I tried it's it pretty alone. Shallow profile, yeah. yeah, pretty shallow profile. So it, is it easy to drink and pair up with this? And can you have a great time with this cognac and this cigar? Absolutely. Uh, if I'm looking to really enhance my experience. Right now, I'm still leaning. Enhancing the experience of the bourbon and of the, is definitely the Woodford with this cigar. I think that the experience itself is best. I'm going to stick to the rum, cigar. obviously. I think the rum brought out... Well, didn't bring out anything. It just flavors meshed, and they really kind of married up together very nicely. Um, but something I wanted to mention on the cognac, the couple, the the this of all the all the cigars I've had with cognac, and I think I've smoked a couple with Ed. Um, when you get into to really well aged um, 
you know, finer cigars, the, the Padrones of the world, the addition to Silvio, the vintage 12 year. Because um, when you age a cigar like that, the flavors tend to mellow out a little bit. They come mm -hmm. a little bit shallower. Some other stuff kind of comes into the forefront. And that's kind of the flavor profile I get on cognacs in general. A little bit more subdued, a little bit lighter on the palate, shallower in flavor. Um, so, like when we smoked the vintage 12 year with the cognac, that was one of my favorite pairings of all time. The addition yeah. of Silvio with cognac, the double Corona matched up perfectly. So, Maybe. So basically that mellowness, so maybe even like with those two guys, some some scotches when you get, say you have the, the let's just take Johnny Walker, in, into it's a blended scotch. Right. The youngest of the group is black label, um, but you actually get more flavor from the black label than you do from the blue. And here's the difference in price, $34.99 for the black and $239 for the blue. The blue becomes really smooth, mm -hmm. almost like you're not drinking alcohol. The black has a lot of characteristics and flavor, so it's younger, yes. but it pairs better with, I think, with cigars when you're doing the dance. Well, the Lafroy, its 10-year release versus its 18-year release, completely different flavor profile. Mm -hmm. The 18 gets mellowed, so from that consensus right here, guys, from what we just found, if you age the tobacco, the same, same result mellows the cigar down, you get yes. some flavors, it is really ultra smooth. Yes. And so I get like a double age, or a twelve year age, or a, a padrone, or the Fuente, or an opus, a anything that's aged has a ton of age on it. This group of the maestro. It might be better with something aged. Yeah, Fuentes, Don Carlos. Mm hmm No, in bourbon's minimum aging, like on that Woodford it's four years. You, you can know, taste it. It's got a little bit of that alcohol. It's got a little bit of that alcohol Yeah, absolutely. There's no aging on the rum, and that's been a new trend in the rum world, is to not attach a number to the bottle. Therefore, not to discourage somebody for maybe something that's younger, because rum really doesn't matter the aging process, mm -hmm. I don't think, in my opinion, from what I've had. You know, the Zayas, the Fortacanas, the Zapata. I've had Zapata 23, Fortacana 8. I like the Lacana 8 better. But I think attaching a number to a label, you might start to see that across the, the board and, and rum setting the, setting the bar because, you know, rum's such a popular worldwide drink. You know, bourbon's not a popular worldwide drink. No, I guess not. Scotches have grown. In Scotches have grown. grown Lafroy's done that a little bit with one of their lines. They have the you know the regular Lafroy, and then they do the the quarter cask, which mm -hmm. is an extra aging process. But they don't attach a year to it. Then they have the triple wood, which is the quarter cask that's undergone a sherry, um, a sherry aging, sherry barrel aging process. I, I think which is an good, incredible it's good. Cigar I think people get attached to the numbers. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? It's almost like brand. You know, yeah, it helps you feel justified in spending two hundred dollars on a bottle of scotch. This you is know it's been aged, old, yeah. right? It's been aged, and, and mm -hmm. that 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 kind of comes down to, you know, what we're talking about here is, is sometimes it doesn't matter what the barrel is, and if it oh, it doesn't necessarily mean that a twenty three year old rum is going to be your favorite rum because it was aged twenty three years. It doesn't mean that your favorite cognac has to be a VSOP or an XO. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. Most of the time, it, it kind of comes out in the wash. It's, it's all about your palate and how you have fun with it. And what we're doing right here might have nothing to do with your doing out there. You might say PBR is the greatest thing in the world with this cigar, I and I might not. disagree, or I might agree, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, when we were in Nicaragua, we had a member of our group who preferred, because of his taste, his palate, he preferred the reserve champagne over the double age vintage. Absolutely. I mean, might sound me, absurd to me, to me based on yeah. the price There's and a 12 year age and everything or else. Or a 3 year age. Right. You right. know, and, 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 and yet and yet that was his palate. That's the way it is, and I think that's what people have to find out just like we sat here today and we tried uh, bourbon and rum and cognac. We had a variety of wrappers and aging on cigars. We have a Connecticut Shade, we have uh, a Suma uh, Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian Sumatra, a Nicaraguan Maduro, and, uh, and um, we all had different experiences, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you have, and I think that's what we've tried to show today. Well, tasting is just that. I mean, not to say that everything we just said was complete crap, but tasting is just that. Tasting is your taste. If, if I like sweet potatoes and you don't, that doesn't mean sweet potatoes suck. No. You know. 
It just means that my taste is different than your taste. I it's love different green than Josh's peppers, taste. and he won't touch them. He won't touch a green pepper. <laughs> exactly. But, but that's what's fun mm -hmm. about tasting in general, mm -hmm. tasting beers. And that's why the variety just makes so much difference. And it's so great. Why we have this much variety is because everyone's taste and palate is different. Why, what is the need for 100,000 different blends of cigars? It'd be zero. All right. You know, unless they all tasted different they to can, different people's they palates. They can use it the, same leaves, the same formula. Right. It's a tobacco leaf. Wrapper, yeah. And then you'd, everyone would just smoke the same cigar. Right. And at the end of the day, it's a different leaf in a different soil. And that's making a ton of difference to someone's palate. Yeah. It's important to know that, you know, when we're describing these flavors and stuff, and I'm saying I'm picking up creaminess and vanilla and, you know, nuts and all these other things, um, you're not tasting any of those things, really. You're tasting... You know that particular blend or blend of tobacco leaves and what soil and what climate it is in and how much sunlight it got. It's it's all merely just describing the differences in the tobacco. So there's not necessarily anything, you know. And there, there's can, no vanilla flavoring. Right. Is what I'm trying to say it's just and my it's vanilla. Describing. My vanilla can you be, be your caramel? Mm -hmm. And it's right. if I've never eaten a piece of caramel in my life. My honey. How am I tasting caramel in this cigar? I have no idea what it even tastes like. You know. It's based on experience. If I don't eat cinnamon, how am I going to taste cinnamon in my cigar? Right. My mint could be your cinnamon. You know, it, it, it's, all, it's all that. You get a little bit of something like white pepper versus black pepper. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I eat white pepper. A lot of people don't eat white pepper. I know what white pepper tastes like versus black pepper. Right. You know, not everyone eats white pepper versus black pepper. So it's basically when you sit down and you form your own tastings, don't fall into... To Josh's point, this tastes like vanilla. Because no, it doesn't. It tastes like however your palate forms it to taste like. Mm -hmm. It's it's what you feel it tastes That's like. That's right. When you're when you're tasting a cigar, you're tasting the tobacco and the flavors that come off those leaves. And you know It's familiarity. Yeah, it is. It, and it's it don't be disappointed if you hear someone said vanilla, I taste Vanilla, hints of wet leather and, yeah. <laughs> and a woody. I really want know, wet leather. A dirty taste. You yeah. know, dirt. Fresh yeah. dirt. Fresh dirt. Oh, That's please. I don't, I've never gone looking for a cigar that tastes like fresh dirt. But, um, you know, the smell, though, but, it's not spring but, rain. That's right. Summer well, when you, when you, <laughs> there, When you talk about earthiness, when you first take a cigar and get the aroma of the foot, I think that there's a certain earthiness that you'll often get. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's dirt grown leaves right, that we're smoking. Right. It, it smells like it smells like an aging room of mm -hmm. tobacco. And if you've never and, been in there, you know what's great? Um, I've smelled you go into like uh, a brewery with the barrel aging room, like Voodoo Brewery that's in Meadville. Uh, I've got a chance to go into their room that uh, ages the cigar, uh, ages cigars, the ages <laughs> the beer in bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. And you walk behind this wall that they have, and the smell of bourbon yeah. and oak is so prevalent. But it actually reminds me of walking into a cigar shop. So many cigars now are, are aged in the bourbon barrel because the bourbon barrel breathes. It's the best barrel in the world. Right. The chard, it doesn't mold. It allows for the breathability. It doesn't give you an uh, obnoxious flavor uh, that takes off of it. Mm -hmm. You know, rum, for the most part, would be aged in stainless steel. Really? Or copper. Oh, you know, okay, right. But All when right. You get, to get the color on it, you've got to put it in some type of barrel. You got to put it in a sherry cask, or you have to put it into a bourbon barrel. That's how you get the coloration. You know, like white lightning, bourbon mm -hmm. uh, whiskey that's not aged is 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 clear. Is clear. You know, it, all all alcohol is clear, but a tobacco leaf, just like the natural coloring in there, it should be natural looking when you're smoking a fine product or drinking a fine product. It sh it shouldn't be red. Let's put it that way because that's BS. If it's bright green, it isn't naturally done. You know. <laughs> no. And a lot of vodkas and stuff out there, guys, have a lot of uh, a lot of additives. And that's another thing with the cigar industry. When we're talking about we're talking about artisan. Yeah. You know, people that do things as a craft, that do things as an art form. Right. People who age a liquor in a barrel for 20 years before they profit on it, 
people who age tobacco inside of a bourbon barrel or in, in a bale for 12 years before they profit on it, that deserves protection. That deserves a little bit of, uh, of leeway when it comes to the government and taxation and who's going to regulate this stuff and not. I mean, it's art. It's art. Um, Pennsylvania right now, guys, in closing, has introduced a tax of about 40% on the wholesale cost of cigars. Any tax affects any industry. If the tax is unjustified and there's no reason for it, if the tax is on cigars to pay for a road, that makes no sense whatsoever. So unjustified taxability. They won't ever raise that amount of money. doesn't matter on the political leanings. It's, <laughs> it's based on just dollar figures and not on what people are doing to what, not what's harmful and not what isn't harmful. So if anybody's out there and you see that tax and you don't like that tax, you can jump on to uh, Cigar Rights of America. It has an easy form to fill out. You get a hold of your local politician. Talk to them about the 40% tax. Keep the FDA out of the humidor. Cigar Rights of America does that. If the FDA regulates these products, the cigars. FDA regulates this alcohol, but it's so lenient. You know, what they're trying to do cigars would be to keep you out of being able to touch your own cigar. Someone have to slide it through a window. You know, and this is, I mean, that's not even a joke. Someone would have to come in and lock doors and slide you a cigar with a, with, through a window for you to be able to grab it. Or like in Canada, just on the other side of the border there, uh, which I visited where these beautiful humidors from the 1950s, some of the most beautiful artwork I've ever seen were empty and filled with newspapers. And unless you initiated the purchase by saying, I'm going to the cabinet, I want to buy a cigar, then they would pull these beautiful cigars out from underneath the cabinet, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Sold it to me anyway. I just didn't know the lingo at first, so it kept me away from not because I didn't know the lingo. But as soon as I knew the lingo, I'm an adult making adult decisions. I went and purchased a cigar anyway. Had a great experience with the cigar, but the humidors were empty, but they were beautiful. We don't need that here. We don't need that. Well, another thing the FDA wants to do, which drives me crazy, is... Um we talk about artwork and, uh, you know, this fact that cigars the art, but the boxes themselves are an art form. Um, you know, from the traditional Cuban art to the modern boxes that have these slick appearances and stuff, what the FCA would like to do is put those, you know, gruesome, um, you know, scare tactic style pictures on there of, you know, black lungs and all this stuff, which really doesn't pertain to the cigar. What is important to remember that cigarettes and tobacco and... Uh, um, the yeah, cigar the tobacco, chemicals. they're one, they're two different kinds of tobacco. Two, the amount of, there's no chemicals or extra nonsense in this thing. And the way you smoke is completely different. So, um, you know, they want to get rid of the, the, the beautiful artwork that we have on the boxes and instead put those horrible pictures on there. And just imagine what the humidors would look like if you looked around. It was all, you know, black, black and white gums box. and destroyed. Yeah. It'd um, be great. So, yeah, it would be, it would, it would be horrible. But yeah, it would <laughs> actually be horrible. Um, I mean, it, and then that kind of stuff like that, everyone just has to be careful, no matter what your political leanings are, that, uh, you know, any freedom that gets taken away or anything that gets taxed, guys, mm -hmm. uh, it's just not great for, for everybody. A unless, you know, you have, you have a good reason for it and a just reason. I, like, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but Winston Churchill once said, <clears throat> a country that thinks they're going to create prosperity by taxing themselves, it's like a man trying to lift himself up by standing in a bucket. There you have it. For Josh Mills and Ed Brandyberry, I'm Josh Eagle from Inside the Humidor. Get out there and burn one, folks. Thanks for watching Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle. If you have any questions or you want to know any more about cigars or pairing, you can find Ed at... Ed at smokestackpgh.com. And we have Josh developing our brand new website. What's that called? It's called stackcigars.com. It'll be a little retail website for us okay. to uh, well, you know, get cigars out there to people that maybe don't have a, uh, a brick and mortar shop near them that they can, they can support. Yeah, and we're going to have some blogs on there and some questions are going to be answered. Right. You can get a hold of me at info at smokestackpgh.com. We talked a little bit in this episode about golfing, guys. There's some great stuff that goes along with golfing to keep that cigar up off the ground. 
First thing here is what we call the cigar minder. It looks like a banana. This person must have either had a banana clip or some kind of thing in the 80s for the hair. Look at these things. You know, there's a little clip on for the hair. But this thing right here, it clips onto the side of, the, uh, of your golf cart. Your cigar goes right in here. So it's held and it's up off the green. There's a, there's a, a real problem with pesticides. To keep that looking green in Pennsylvania, guys, on that golf course, the amount of chemicals that actually go on a tee box are astronomical. Mm -hmm. If you set your cigar down in the tee box and then pick that back up and put it in your mouth, you are actually then defeating the purpose of smoking a cigar. You might as well smoke hazardous waste. Well, lick the green. The green. Yeah, you might as well lick yeah. the green. I've done, I've done it before too. I never really thought well, about it. And it's on green. top of there. No, he hasn't licked the green. <laughs> no, except my. But cigar that's on a the great green. tool it's right there. The same thing. When you're riding around in the golf cart, Josh, what do we got? We got these guys right here. It's designed to fit inside of a cup holder. Basically has the uh, the ashtray built in there, has a little spot for you to set your cigar down. Um, we've got it in stainless steel, and then we have the uh, the more premium leather leather wrapped version of it. So these things are pretty cool. Um, we had these brought in on a special request from a, from a customer because he was leaving these clipped onto the golf cart. So he figured this would be a little bit harder for him to f forget and leave behind. Um, but yeah, if you smoke in your car, this would be a great thing to set in your ashtray uh, or in your in your cup holder. Great thing for the golf course, that kind of thing. So. Check these out. We've got them in stock. Yep, and there's a lot of great stuff uh, for the golf course. And get those golf bundles. Buy those golf cigars. you got the Perdomo Yuma packs to keep for a month. Get them for the foursome. Great thing right. is it comes right. with four cigars. Right. Coming out soon, we have the small batch cigars in four packs as well. Ed's grab the Perdomo. That's a Perdomo four-pack. Comes in three different wrappers, sun-grown, Connecticut, and Maduro. Go out there and grab them. Great for the foursome. Smoke you your favorite one. Pack. You empty that. You can fill it back up. And use it again next week. You probably again. use that thing for a right. month on the golf course. Stick them in your bag. They're not going to go bad. I'm Josh Eagle for Inside the Humidor. Get out there and burn one.